No, that's about it. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Is there anyone else that... Thank you. Under five, this is considered taking the action necessary regarding the request by the owner agent for a very to that all things uh, code work to this is the uh, from number four from the previous or uh, we we'll to read all that and this is uh, consider take action from uh, what we uh, just heard. <coughs> to be a, a hardship or a, a characteristic of the land that uh, would lend itself to the, that would require the variance to be developed properly. Um, so considering the unique uh, aspects of the land and why the variance relates to that would be a, an item to consider. This is just, this is, you mentioned something you mentioned something about a carport. This is just for the garage and back, right? Well, it's just for, the, it for both. Okay, well, this, this right here, if I'm not mistaken, is just for the height and construction to allow a height of 23 feet. It means three foot of below the maximum amount. So, so he's just asking for he's just asking for three feet right now on the building in the back. Yes. So if I'm not mistaken. We're just approving three feet. He can still build the 20 feet. Councilman, I believe there's actually two variances. There's the uh, a three foot uh, variance for the height and then a setback allowance also. So there's actually two separate variances requested. Um, Yeah, the, the front yard's 20. Okay. We're going to reduce it. So we're going to exceed the height three. And we're going to exceed the setback. Setback. Yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't. We don't know what he's asking for. Did you put on there what, what amount of setback you're asking for? Like how much? Because it's not on here. Is it my number? 
I think it, it would be five feet because 13 is all that they're allowing him for the permit, but he wants 18. Okay. That was the width. That's the width of the That's, width that's, width of the width of the mm -hmm. that's the width of the carport. Yeah, and that's the the plan reviewer told us that that would require a front yard setback variance. But we don't have to specify how much. Is that the size of what? Nice. Asking for much. I'm going to pay attention. You're talking about one in the backyard, and he's talking about a different building than his front yard. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to figure out is it set back from right from with the deck. Setback from the property line. Is it, is it making it this, uh, wider? So, council, has, council, based on the way that the um, the item is presented, you're you're correct that it doesn't um, discuss exactly how much of a setback variance. So I think the recommendation tonight would be just to consider the height uh, variance alone, and then have the the um, uh, front yard setback brought back in a, in a subsequent meeting where the the amount of the variance is listed clearly in the in the item. If that we makes not sense. Not that right now. I'm just asking, so it doesn't have to come back. It, it may not provide enough notice for the public to determine what exactly they're asking for. True. Um, but the uh, the variance, the three foot variance, would be before council properly tonight, or before ZBA council okay. sitting with ZBA. So now we'll just consider the height variance, and that. In the backyard. You have to pay for those. I noticed that uh, I think it's already table it. Does it have to pay for the next time? Do you recommend that we follow the. You could waive it since they already kind of bought it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ZBA also would have the option to, to table it if they would like to consider everything together in one parcel or at the request of the uh, person seeking the, the uh, variances, if they would like it considered together, they could also ask the ZBA to table it. I have, on this back side here for the staff report, it does kind of address that though as far as the setback. It's setback to allow for a two vehicle parking. So whatever that setback requirement would be is the amount. We don't have to have it digit there if he's saying to get it within the required amount, right? Then it could be considered, this says to allow for a two vehicle carport. What would that mean? That, um, as far as the carport, I'm not sure, but generally the variances would would, um, would mention the, the base uh, like, like they did with the height, um, which you can see the height of 23 being three above the maximum, so you know what so, the base yeah. is and then what, the re what they're requesting. Okay. Ultimately, with all of this, does it even meet the, law, the legal part um, for hardship or? Th that, would be a, that would be a question ultimately for the board to answer, but if the board is, could look at the width of the land and if the width of the land is not allowing um, you know, the pitch that he wants and considering all the other elements, does it sort of match the surrounding? You know, is there something inherent in that land that creates where the pitch isn't going to be able to be anything other than the 23 to build like he wants it? That would be something that would be unique to the land. Is there? What if we table this until we can get a site plan where we know where this is located? Is that feel comfortable or not? From the way it is here, I'm looking at
this is the house up here. This is the garage in the backyard. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to table this for the back. So I want the council to be able to see and, and have a chance to look at this as opposed to trying to decide for this tonight. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. All right. So you can take these important documents yep. back with you right here. And we'll uh, we'll talk about this. Okay. Next slide. Yeah, you can make a motion to table it and let it go on the record. But you could, yeah. Yeah, then it would come back. Do you want me to leave his paperwork? No, uh, we'll read, we'll, uh, I want to talk with you before, uh, so I can tell you what I'd really like to, like to say, okay? We'd like to work with you if we can, but we've got some problems with you guys. Okay. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we table this to a later date. Next meeting. I'll second. We have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the aye. 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 Thank you. Nope. 
pick up this and we'll public comment on the whole. Uh, item number three, conduct a public hearing to consider testimony and act upon a request by the owner agent to implant property situated in the city of Van Alstine, Grayson County, Texas, being described as a replant on Taylor, being a replant of Block 1, Block 1 of SL McKinney's amended division of subdivision number 1 in division number 1 of the OPP of Van Alstine, Texas, as per plat of record in volume 183, page 351, DRGCT, being 0 0.455 acres of land in the James McKinney Survey, abstract number 770. The subject properly is generally located in the north side of Taylor Lane between North Preston Avenue and North Main Drive. Is there anyone here to speak of that? All right. Thank you. Hold on, Steve. Oh, there you go. My name is Wayne Jeffers. I live at 576 North Main Drive, four blocks up the road. Uh, my concern is um, with, first of all, I'd like to know what they are going to do with that land. And second of all, the sewage that they're planning on putting houses in there. I've got uh, my neighbor on the north side has uh, sold, supposedly sold his, some of his property. They're going to buy it into three lots. And on past him, there's another new house being built on Preston. And we have had sewer problems in the past. Raw sewage coming up from that line running down uh, towards uh, North Main, no, towards uh, Van Austin Parkway. And um, I think that you need to look at the um, number one traffic and number two, the sewer system. You got quick check that goes into that sewer system from on Preston. You got uh, other businesses along there on, I call it Highway 5, and, and all the other houses plus it. We, if they do put three new houses on the north side of me and the new house there, that four, plus what he's going to do or whoever got the land is going to do with that property right there. Uh, that is a lot of sewage going in along with everything else because a lot of the sewer lines from North Main go to that sewer line there in Preston. My property, I've got a house behind me. Mine goes from, I live on North Main, it goes all the way to, uh, to Preston. And I got a lady that's on the uh, south side of me, it goes through three, two lots, two houses to Preston. So I think you people might want to look at whether it needs to be, something needs to be done with the sewer line. You got the traffic, you got kids in, into there, and that's the biggest concern. And uh, in the past, and I, I can't give you a date of how long ago, we used to have sewer back up into the house, and there's sewer that comes up, you know, like I said, on the uh, um, on that line right along there. And that's my biggest concern with adding that many houses. And uh, the sewer system is probably 50, 60, 70 years old. When I moved in my house 40 years ago, I had to replace the, the, the uh, old clay pipe and put new PVC in there. So those, these old areas of town need to be looked at before you start building all kinds of housing. Further discussion on this work. My name is James Starnes. I live at 455 North Preston Avenue. And I live just on the south side of the uh, land that Tony Miller got to build on. My question is, is it going to be one lot, three separate lots, you know, what's he planning on this?
Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Two lots. I think it's divided between uh, more than one Thank you, Mr. Bill. Any other comments from At this time, uh, we're going to uh, move into the executive session. In accordance with Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, open meetings law, the city council may meet and may close the executive session pursuant to applicable laws before all items are below the executive session. Uh, pursuant to the following designated sections of the Texas Government Code annotated subchapter 551, the council will enter into executive session to discuss the following items. A. Section 551.087, economic development negotiations regarding I, Manchway Development, and uh, I, Trussell Track Development, B, Section 551.074, Personnel Matters Regarding Employment, Employment, Evaluation, Reassignment, Duties, Discipline, or Dismissal from a Public Officer or Employee, namely the uh, City Attorney. And I would encourage each and every one of you to um, remain and, and participate in the for the, for the when we uh, return to see what action we've taken in terms of the rest of the two houses. This one we had, we'll go ahead and resume. On the uh, executive session, uh, we'll actually cover uh, item B later uh, on in the agenda. And um, item A is uh, no action taken. As a rule, we uh, consent agenda, we usually consider everything at once, but uh, because I have uh, somebody who wants to speak on number nine, I'm going to move it down. So we will be on the consent agenda, we will consider item five, six, seven, eight, and ten. All of those. I make a motion we approve uh, the consent agenda items five, six, seven, and eight, and ten. I'll second. We have a motion to take any further discussion. All in favor, raise your hand. And one abstention. Sorry, I see you calling the dinner. I wasn't here for that, so we, I might as well. We didn't need it. Fine, that's a word. Take my almonds to go home now. Now, uh, I don't know, I'm not, I'm real, uh, consider taking the action necessary regarding the passenger of the ordinance, limiting the ordinance uh, number 591 and ordinance 835, amending section 30 31 of the Van Austin Code of Ordinances to amend rules and regulations regarding optional establishment and continuation of the Parks and Recreation Board. And I have a speaker this morning. Yeah, I have a question. So, I have down there speaking on behalf, or as a board member and then personal, because I think that it would be inappropriate me for me to give my personal feelings as a board member. Is that okay, or do you want me? Is that okay? We'll take you all. Okay, because mm -hmm. I don't think it would be right to speak on behalf of the board of my personal feelings. So, um, in contemplation of the city manager and leader of the advisory board is suspending our park and recreation department, and I think that my fellow board members deserve to get the recognition of the value that they brought to Van Alstine and the city council should be informed of the time, effort, and money that these individuals have expended. <clears throat> but there's also hard and non-hard costs associated with having yet no community involvement in another sector of our city government. This board cumulatively has spent hundreds, if not thousands, of hours and time to better our city's parks. This does not include meeting times. However, in the first 90 days that the board was uh, in January, we met five times to address, to address serious deficiencies in our parks and to contemplate the master plan, which was needed before the city could address grants or other sources of funding, and that plan was required and had been in a stasis for almost a year, holding up funding and grant process as well as any bond discussion. All of those hours were personal time outside of meetings, walking the parks, physically cleaning the parks, doing research, finding grants that would cost, cover costs for the park. And I would say conservatively that the seven of those people probably spent at least seven hours, at least a thousand hours. I know I probably spent hundred, and I know Katrina did as well. 
um, an average wage of 15, that was a benefit to the city of at least $15,000, and I think that's probably a good uh, figure. Further, each board member walks in a signed park every month and brings back healthy and safety concerns to the city manager. And just this month, an abandoned freezer was discovered by board member Amber Edwards, not a city employee, it was an eyesore and safety hazard. And once again, this is a free resource that saves hundreds of dollars a month to, to the city. Further, we wanted to be really good community partners, and each Park and Recreation Board had made a commitment to support our community, and a Park and Recreation Board had made the commitment to make sure that the EDC, CDC, Vassin, or City Council member, a I mean, City Council meeting, never had at least one member at that. So we have, were assigned, and everybody made sure that we as community partners were at every single one of these meetings to show both support for the other volunteers of our city and also in our commitment to our city. The Parks and Recreation Board has been a spark of community cohesiveness in less than a year of serving. The only event ever sponsored by both EDC, CDC, VASA, and the city through the Parks and Recs Board people was conceived and planned by the current Parks and Recs Board, and it was called Popsicles in the Park. And it was financially sponsored by member Dennis Gavitz, which I met before, and myself financially, as well as many hours from others. Our board in less than three weeks got all these organizations together and had approximately 80 people attend with a minimum advertising and absolutely no budget. The Boy Scouts had their part, they had their event at the exact same time, and they had already contacted me and I'd already talked to them about having the event because they actually wanted us to move in conjunction with their event next year. I thought it was a smashing success for a first time event. All manpower was volunteer, and not one city employee, and not one city dollar was used. And it was the brainchild of Maria Hickson Grimmett, who would be here, except her, her son has a music program tonight. One of the major concerns of citizens of Van Alstine is a fear of losing the hometown feel that makes our town so special. Less than 30 days ago, our city manager tasked us with planning a spring egg hunt and looking at how we could support the fire department and adding fun items to the existing 4th of July celebration. Several board members had delved into securing items, including Maria, had already gotten people to donate much of what we needed. And to prepare people for those events, and those members now have to go back to those people and explain there is no the Parks and Recreation Board. Further, the board was spending their own personal funds to build a float to be in the Van Alstine Christmas Parade to be a good community partner, a board that would no longer exist at the time of the parade. And I am confused why there was never a conversation at any meeting about the city manager's decision to suspend our board. It would have been a great common courtesy to discuss any committee decision with us and considering that two weeks after our last meeting, this decision was made. We've never been given a reason. Instead, we were asked to secure support for an egg hunt on 4th of July and to build a float. And I wonder if KFAB is, if it is no longer active, Hoover, <clears throat> and there's no community support, will be initiated for these events and will city have employees to staff these events. And further, I'm not sure that the board really ever has a chance, had a chance if we were not seen as a value to the board. Our current board has <clears throat> someone on our park with 40 years of park and tournament experience as well as contacts with officials of the Town Lake Park and McKinney and other recreation parks throughout Texas and the Southwest and has been more than generous to make any phone calls and contacts on our behalf. We have someone that's a turf expert. We have someone that has decades of experience in excavation and landscaping. And we have someone with private and public experience who helped raise $1.5 million in donations for a nonprofit in 2019. We also have people that are new here wanting to get involved. And we also have someone that has three generations of historical perspective for our board. And since there won't be another board meeting, I would like to take the chance to at least name the people that have served these last nine months. Greg Carroll, who was our vice president. Dennis Gavitz, who's not only put books on the ground, but he's actually put dollars out of his pocket. Katrina Arsenal, who we walked in 36 degree weather in the rain to look at parks. Kim Phillips, who has come. Amber Edwards, who someone new, came with new ideas. Maria Hickson Grimmett, who has three generations of history and sometimes had to teach us the history of Van Alstine that we did not know. And also, I'd like to give thanks to past member Marisela Derrick, which when I came on gave me a spark to be excited and to know what we were doing. To, um, she was very determined um, for girls' sports, and I thank her for all that she did. So, um, and then that is as a board member. As a personal note, um, 
I think there's been missed opportunities. Almost a year ago, the Parks and Recreation Board wanted one park to be our win. The park that people saw as an improvement that would be noticed and picked that, was, that pick was Dorothy Field Park. Funds were offered and the city did not take them. And how do I know? The reason I know is because I actually offered them. I tend to be more private and give my giving and may not know, many may not know that the Boyd family has been very philanthropic. And I'm not boasting, but I think people need to know that we do care about the city. Um, we don't shout it out from the mountaintops, but some of the things we've done for Van Alstein is that we have given, we gave the seed money to start what is now known as Falderall, which was originally going to be a mini round talk with a judge antique and art show. And we continued to support that until it became Follow Law. We were a sponsor of Follow Law for many, many years until other people stepped up. We have donated to the ISD in both items, <clears throat> in both inside and outside of the both high school and middle school. We also donated the whole computer system for the library, which included all hardware, software. We brought in our staff to install the um, all everything, have everything configured, the whole system, and at the time the city could not afford the internet charges and the Boyd Family Trust picked up those costs until the city could budget to be able to cover that, which I believe was almost a year. The total cost of that project was over six figures that we gave. The Boyd Family Trust decides every Christmas where to spend charitable donations and we usually give towards physical items, not money into a fund. Some of the past have been the library, which was at the time really needed because there was a lot of people who did not have internet out here or could not afford it. We did a um, uh, dormitory for an orphanage in Africa, and we also supported the educa education costs and immigration of someone who came here who is now a legal U.S. citizen. <clears throat> Bought in 2018 and announced in 20. 2018-2019, we were both investors and owners of the Rocket City Trash Pandas, which is a minor league baseball team. And obviously, baseball and softball is important to us. And last year, we were approached to, by Grayson College to donate lights for the Grayson College softball, and because we were asked, we did so. And those lights allowed the college to hold money-making tournaments for both college and community, being a positive revenue stream and not just a draw in the college. The donation was the largest living donation ever given to the history of Grayson College, which was founded in 1965. That field, this just recently was named NFCA Field of the Year. That's a national award, and it's also the Junior College Softball Field of the Year. And that brings me back to Van Alstein. Ten months ago, I volunteered to cover the cause to do landscaping on, Philly, on Dorothy Fields Park. And wherever it may be, we can walk out there, it's still not done. And all I will say as a board member, it's frustrating for me. And I think that there's been <clears throat> other things such as the Zebo, there's been stuff in Force More. And we would the trust would have been more than willing to do any of these projects. <clears throat> but we weren't taking on it on it. I hope in the future that Van Alstein won't miss, won't miss on those opportunities. And I am frustrated that something that the board decided 10 months ago we did not get. Dorothy Fielder has had some, but it, it's not what we want it to be. And more people see that feed that park than anybody else of all ages. When they walk in City Hall and they drive through town, it, it could have been it could have been a shiny example. We could have done all the landscaping, we could have done everything. Anyway, it's a missed, it's a missed opportunity, and when opportunities are not seized, those dollars, man hours, and ideas will move on to another city, another board, another project that will welcome the help. Welcome the help. A giving heart will find somewhere else to give. I did not apply to the Park and Recreation Board to have something else on my resume. I did it because I cared about the city. There were extremely dangerous conditions in our parks, and we were in dire straits with some TLC. They were an eyesore for visitors, and they did not meet the needs of our citizens. I think our board has done an amazing job. I give them gold stars for caring and physically getting it done. I know that they will be an awesome. They will be awesome in whatever endeavor that they choose to spend their time, money, and passion. Those entities will be blessed by their participation. It has been my honor to serve them. <clears throat> they each have my gratitude for serving in 36 degree weather when it was raining <laughs> and 100 degree weather on bounce houses and popsicles. They have never shirked their duty to this community, and they have given from the heart. And um, 
I actually, even as a board member, probably support expanding it because if we don't have everybody on board, then our board will never be a success. So we either need to be wanted to be there or we need it to be gone because if we're not, well, if it's not benefit, it'll never be a success. I appreciate thanking your time. I hope that if you see the board members that were not able to be here tonight because we only found out less than 10 days ago about this, I hope that you will take the time to thank them because they really did put in hundreds of hours and they did walk in rainy, holding, I think actually even sleep at one time, and they walked when it was 115 degrees. I thank you for your time. Yes, uh, Mayor, you could consider those together. I would, I would rather, I don't have time for the talk, um, I'd rather consider one and then the other because I believe that they are two, two separate deals. Um, one is amending the ordinance. Um, regarding optional establishment and continuation of the parks and recreation. So that means it is optional, which means it can come back at any time or be put back together as necessary in the event that we need it. And then the other one is just, are we, are we going to take care of it at this time and bring it back later? Or what's, so I would like to keep them separate. Um, in regards to what Julian said there is a lot that the, the park board has done. Um, I agree that they have not only been out in cold weather, but even back when, uh, I don't know, back 20 years ago, well, Zach's 14, so probably 10 years ago when the city had no money, there was the park board and Vassal were out mowing the, mowing the ball fields and everything else um, back when Forest Moore had just been built. So there's there's no, in my opinion, this is not a reflection personally on anybody that has ever served on that board since the time of its, its inception. Um, my personal opinion on this, and I think it's necessary to say, is that we, we knew that this time was coming because the same thing happens in McKinney, the same thing happens in, in Salina. Um, when you have a parks department that takes over and you have a parks department that starts running and they become a profit center for the town and they start taking over new sports, which will happen. No, no offense to Vassar or anything else in the great work that they do. But when you have 5,000 houses come, the, Parks department becomes an integral part of that. So this is, I believe, is just the first step in that transition. So there's nothing against any of those many wonderful people in the 20 years that they've been doing. It would have been nice if we would have had a discussion there at Parks and Rec and not. I mean, Dennis spent time. We were told not 30 days ago to go forward, and we've actually spent money and time making the parties play and stuff like that. So I think it could have been handled. Uh, so we also remember we now, just in the last month or so, separated out a whole park department. And to echo Councilman Thomas's sentiments, when you guys volunteered last year, you did so much work. I don't think there's anybody here that wouldn't uh, give you everything to you know, fill so you feed all everything. And, and I actually envision it. One of the things you can understand is that we have a park park now and there are going to be hiccups. And that doesn't keep the, the, what, the wisdom and knowledge it, from the people that are involved to keep having input. Uh, and then there may be a need for this, but we need to get what we have going uh, with, this, with our own park park and 
and see what our needs are. I think right now we don't know what we don't know, but we have, this is our first growing step, and I think that is the most growing step. I think it's going to grow and experience some pain. Well, may I say something? I think that this is also, I mean, I get, I'm not, I think there's been some missed opportunities, but I also get that this is Keith Van Austin Beautiful, who used to do recycling, that now we have three curves, recycling. I mean, you can either take that as a third or you can say, Keith Van Austin Beautiful made recycling a big enough deal that the city moved to having curb recycling. I, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I'm not that, I'm just, you know, I want to make sure that the people that, Put the boots on the ground got the recognition tonight that they should. I just wanted to encourage everyone to look at what it actually is, not make it more than what this movie is. The park advisory's purpose, the board's purpose, is to assist the city manager. The board did a lot of legwork when we didn't have these employees, kind of echoing what you guys said, but you know, it was needed and we did do a lot of work. Now Justin has kind of taken over. Um, we have paid employees that work with Justin and when situations change and if the board you know, needs to be reorganized at a later date, then they can be. Um, and also, just encourage every citizen, like you still have a voice, you have to come to council anyway for parts, so it doesn't take away your voice. Anybody's welcome and encouraged to speak and make the wishes known. So, uh, my, I, I agree with everything that we're saying there, and as we grow from a city standpoint, you got to have uh, paid staff to be able to handle the parks, the growth of the parks, the beautification of it, the amenities, everything that's all goes with that. Uh, but very similar to how we operate the CDC, very similar to how we operate the EDC, where we have a paid director, and then we have uh, city members that volunteer their time to be able to help the director with the stuff that they do on a you know day by day, week by week, month by month basis is the same need, I think, of what needs to happen with the parks department, in my opinion. So very similar I like how he gave his opinion, my opinion is that I see where this is going and we have to have that in a parks development and a park, you know, a paid employee. But I, I don't see the need to get rid of citizens to help volunteer, to assist or advise, not Wayne anymore, but the parks director and the parks director reports to Wayne. So that's my my two cents about it. And that, that obviously would be need to be redefined in the ordinance and redefined on how the board operates and, and everything like that, which going back to Katrina's point, it, uh, it does. It just, if you amend the ordinance to allow it or not allow it, then you give time to be able to construct uh, a citizen's board for people to still volunteer because I believe they get the best input on the, the parks in general. I mean, I can just tell you that my wife and, and my three year old, who she takes out to the parks, you know, almost every day, she comes back and tells me. 10 things about the parks that I never would have known. And I guarantee you, even somebody that's paid that's just out there driving the parking lot or just walking the path wouldn't know because they don't have a three-year-old out there playing here or there where there's pitfalls. So I'm in support of keeping some sort of board in place that is advisory to a park developer, but maybe Defining that, suspending it right now, and defining it, and then opening it back up. So that's my thing. My suspicion is there's going to ultimately be a need for a fringe of the park. How do you want Which goes on? What yeah, and, and I don't know if we call it a parks board, but we, we can well, definitely have some assistance. I think there'll need to be a support group, but right now I don't think even the park director will even know what he. Yeah, so there's got to be some, it can't just be. This and then nothing, and then the parts board, especially to pick that up and and make it better, right? Like there's got to be some sort of transition in there, and then some sort of advising to the parts board director to be able to help continue maintaining these parts and doing kind of what Sulin talked about, which was beautifying them and growing them and, and doing all the things that we need to do, which we, we have talked about a ton, and I've been a little frustrated with the fact that. 
you know, we, we talk about these things, but there's very little development in them, or, you know, it takes a lot of time in between when we talk about it to when uh, there's actual action. And I get money is the big part of that, and that is a big deal. But if we were able to not just make them an advisory board, but make them a board that actually can take action and do the things, raise money, do the things that they want, then that, that just kind of creates a department almost, which is what we're needing. Two things, Ryan, on, on your point. It's well taken. Um, first thing that's happened that is uh, helping facilitate the change is that we've divided public works into two components. One is streets, water, sewer, meters, uh, and the other component is facilities, parks and recreation. And downtown, I've included downtown as a separate element because light parks downtown is important to our future. Justin Johnson now heads up the facilities parks and recreation side. He has two and a half employees as of January 1st he'll be adding another part-time person. That's kind of our first step towards what you're talking about. They become a paid advisory board if you will. They're the eyes on. They're in the parks every day. They're mowing the grass. They're cleaning the restrooms, those kinds of things. Um, the second thing that took place is in the last few months, uh, the council approved a community development fee of $1,250 per residential household or for um, 3,000 square feet of leaseable space in multifamily uh, or commercial space. Right now we have 544 homes that are under moving dirt currently in our city, and a large portion of those will start paying into um, a fund that's set aside for parks and recreation. So the goal is to get Justin up and operating. He becomes the facility side of parks and recreation, and I'm hopeful by the time we reach budget time, we can plan to stand up a parks director in our city or parks department. So we'll get there. We'll have a trained facilities group who's been doing those parks things at that time. Now I did oversee um, a very, very large parks and recreation business aboard Marine Corps Base Camp Pendleton. We ran a recreation program that would have been on par with SC or UCLA or Baylor or anyone with football, baseball, all of that stuff. So it doesn't on deaf ears and I want to make it clear I'm greatly appreciative for what this parks board and previous parks boards have done and the fin financial contribution that uh, Sue Lynn and her husband have made to this community. Um, but here we're going to have our finances uh, there when we stood up our, not stood up, when we ran our parks and recreation department it was so substantial that we had to have an advisory board and we separated it into a multitude of advisory boards because we did so many large sports. So I, I see the need to have one for now to get us from here until our next budget year. I would like to have a group of people that serve as a, a working team, an advisory panel if you will. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to create an agenda every month. We don't have to keep minutes for a working group that can meet in my office at will uh, to work through issues like the development of the downtown park or North Park or where we want to go. So um, I've shared this in components, whether I addressed it clearly and in appropriate protocol, you know, um, probably not. You know, I have a lot to do and sometimes I don't do it all exactly right. And I think this is the right approach. I think uh, it's not people driven this decision. It's not that uh, these two people and the rest of the Parks Board are doing anything wrong. They're not. Uh, we have a lot of amazing people in this city that give a lot of their time. It's just time to make change and that's why it wasn't here. Yeah. No, I think I'll add.
I'll make a motion to pass the ordinance amending ordinance number 591 and ordinance 835, amending section 1331 of the Code of Ordinances, to amend rules and regulations regarding optional <coughs> establishment and continuation of the Parks and Recreation Board. Motion to second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. And all opposed, same sign. Same. And all abstain. Item number 10. I don't know if I have a plan to go over Consider taking the action necessary uh, regarding the previously uh, described um, lot from uh, number three, subject property journal located in the north side of Carolina between North Preston Avenue and North Main Drive. Just finished uh, upgrading the line in Van Alstine Parkway that ties into the one in Preston, and then Justin and with public works crews keep an eye on each one as it fails. And then we just redid the one in Jefferson, West Jefferson. Yeah. So it, if there have been reported problems on it, it just hasn't come up to the top of the list yet. Eventually, all of them get replaced. But well, and so that's my biggest concern is eventually they'll all get replaced. I mean, I'll just give you a little two cents. Um, my mother-in-law lives on Nunnally, and the sewer system that runs uh, north and south on Nunnally, you can smell the backup sewer on the north side of where she's at. I don't know, I forgot which, there's a cross street right there. But, um, so I would be very hesitant to say somebody can come in there and start building two, three, four, five lots, you know, houses right there with what the current system is. Um, and I kind of feel the same way about Main Street that if we were like, hey, this is gonna get done in next year's budget and it's good to go, then that makes sense to, you know, say, hey, let's put three homes, two homes, five homes, whatever, how many homes you wanna put over there. Um, but it, to me, it doesn't make a lot of sense right now to divide that into lots. So that's just my opinion. I'm not asking for variances on anything. He's just asking to split his lot into required what we require, right? No, anything extra on that? And council, um, the the issues of what exactly is going to be built on the land or what can be done with it. Um, those may come up at a later time at the permitting stage. Right now, this is just a question on the dividing the land from one lot into the two lots. So the other issues, the permitting and building, may be dealt with later at, at when the actual building uh, plans are submitted and things like that. So. Could it zone a single family? Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah, that's misstated. It's actually, um, it is zoned two family. It was zoned um, in 2005 for two family and a replat to divide it into two lots was actually approved in 2015. It was just never filed. Um, so once it goes unfiled for a year, it voids the replatting. So it's been sold from Duncan to Miller and they're bringing it back so to have the replat approved again. And, and now <coughs> yes, sir. But you said it's, it's not single family? No, it is two family. Yeah, two family residential duplex zoning. So they can split this lot and have a duplex and a duplex. Mm -hmm. if, if we go that form. Today we're just approving split. Wait a minute. 
But if we improve, <coughs> if we improve the splitting of it, it's already done that way. They wouldn't have to come to us to get approval to do a duplex. It's already done that way. Correct? C correct. It wouldn't affect the zoning, but it, once they actually started pulling the permits, all the city's permitting requirements would, would have to be satisfied at that point. But the building is sort of conjecture at this point. It's just dealing with the splitting of the land, and the splitting will not affect the zoning. It, it'll stay with the, the duplex zoning that it currently has. So right now, they put one duplex on it, but if we split it in two, they can put two duplexes on it. They could put, uh, I guess, a duplex on each lot, or however many, yeah, however many would be permissible with the lot size. So now we're not talking about two homes, we're talking about two duplexes. So they can already put four families on that no. space? No, no they, yeah, they'd have to comply with whatever the city's um, zoning is. Um, so dividing it um, may allow, depending on the size, that would dictate whether or not, what they're allowed to put on it. But that would be, right now, the, the only matter before the council is just what, splitting the lot from one into two for the request. So what may be built on it later it kind of comes up in the permitting stage. But is it with the split, like what would the other parcel be then? Like what would the other piece of land be zoned as if split into two lots? Uh, assuming that it's gone through the plat review process in PNZ, um, it, it would have had to comply with all the city's requirements for that review. Right, yeah, uh, yeah. They, they dedicated the north half of the right of way about 12 and a half feet to finish the complete right of way and all the lot sizes match the current zoning requirements. Uh, oh, staying family. Mm -hmm. So splitting it still stay within the limits for duplex. Yes. Assuming that it otherwise met all the, the requirements yeah. for, for that. So essentially, I, I know what we're voting on now, but if, if we voted on it, they could essentially do it now with two duplexes rather than one without us having a delay to object to it. Yeah. That, that's my understanding, not having been at the PNZ. Yeah. I guess we're hearing that they, they complied with all requirements for the, the replat and the split, so it would be permissible to build a, a duplex in that zone. Issue. tend to weigh heavily in, in favor of the, the plat being granted because platting is a, is a ministerial act instead of a legislative. And I believe what, what you're hearing from the PNZ review is that uh, city staff agrees that it meets all of the city's requirements for that replat. So. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Anybody from the council here to entertain a motion on the motion? I'll make a motion to approve the replat as stated. And I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? 
to signify the raise your right hand. Any opposition? Same side. Go to right. Yeah, three to two. Mm -hmm. Out of 12. Consider taking the uh, action necessary regarding to the continuation of the park forward. Actuals, much better number. Mm -hmm. um, you should have a 
a funny little sheet that shows the amended budget with some little yellow lines on it. What I did was I took the 12 month trailing actual numbers, put those into the revenue line, and then took the uh, amount that we're going to um, assist our, or excuse me, hire our assistant, um, and took that over the remaining nine months, um, which shows we have then had a loss at year end of $29,000, which is different than the original approved, which I think was 10600 or something like that, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, and so what we're asking for is an amendment so that we can make the higher end of the budget. Once again, we're spending the CDC's money, not the city money. Anyway, it reminds me to bring that up. Um, currently, we have $288,000 in the bank from numbers. Um, so we're not going to be spending all the surplus, if you will. Any questions from the council? The first number that you mentioned, you all originally budgeted for a loss, but then you said yeah. a, a different if, number. If, if you looked at income, um, the original. Oh, oh income, negative 34,000 revenue, 10,000 dollar loss, and now it's going to be 20. Now that we have the revenue, the actual revenue for FY19, we actually showed we had a thousand dollars income for FY19. Yeah. I just, I don't have the page that has the little yellow line. So okay. Give us any yeah. It's probably in there, it probably just didn't come off the top. Mm -hmm. I apologize for that. It should say FY20 amended budget on the bottom.
Uh, actually, we only had two requests this year. Uh, we funded both of them. Uh, one was the actual bridge replacement at Forest Moor that the city did the labor on. We paid for everything else, uh, just over 12000 And then we replaced the play, uh, playground safety material at uh, Eastfield, the Kitty Wilson Park. Total to date, we've uh, funded 17 major projects at just over $260,000. Uh, year to date, we spent just over $15,000 on our parks. Community funding on the business side, so we have a facade grant program. Basically, anything that's connected to an actual existing business, awning, class, et cetera, if it's going to improve the look of the business in the city, we'll consider the funding. Uh, we approved an awning for Quilt Asylum, uh, signage for Asian cuisine. We did three separate projects to help get Old City Hall back up to shape, and I'm sure the was pretty good. Uh, we did the facade on Harvest Dental, and Bucks Mart's actually redoing a uh, storm damage awning. On the community side, these are more the programs that don't fit into that neat little facade grant bucket. Uh, Christmas Town, last year at 18, we spent about $4,000. Uh, Lux Aesthetic, that went into an upstairs space that uh, has that vacant for years. Uh, we basically paid for the retrofitting so that a uh, company could move into that space. Uh, we funded the three downtown mural projects. There were three in total at $14,000. Cooley Bay Winery, we funded the installation of sound panels because if you've ever been there, big event, it gets pretty loud. Thank you for that. <laughs> the uh, farmer's market total cost for the year was 29867 uh, Music in the park, fall or all, we repeated the funding we did the year before for a total of 8500 for both of those. Uh, current future projects, Christmas Town this year, our board very graciously uh, upped our funding big time. We more than doubled that. Uh, downtown lighting projects, so those are the lights you see on top of the buildings. And yes, we have a few out, we have some uh, balls loose. But uh, that was 3000 for materials. We haven't paid the electrician yet. We have the bill that's going to be quite a bit more than that, but obviously worth it. And those are going to be on year round. They're on photo cells, so they'll come on about 6 o'clock at night. Rodney, if I can stop you for just a second. Yes. I get in about 6 30 in the morning, and as I'm driving 121 West, and I'm about five miles out, these lights on the building across the street are my beacon to follow now. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, the Balancing Police Department actually came to us with a unique project too, and we can't fund a lot for the police, but one thing we could fund, they wanted to paint and rewrap their Hummer for public events, educational purposes, that sort of thing. Uh, legally, that fund is something we can do, so we pay for that. And, it, yeah, and of course, our performance agreement with United Ag and Turf, aka John Deere, uh, that has been signed and sealed, and we are good to go. So total, uh, we funded 38 total projects, just over $225,000. Uh, year to date, this fiscal year is 87674 And our operating costs, M&O, no, were basically about the same, 13211 And that is it. Any questions? That's you. great. It says consider taking action, but I don't know that we have any action that we need to take that we need to approve that. I think you actually technically approve it, because we have to hold a public hearing to ratify it on our end. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Community Development Capital Improvement Program that was just presented. Any motion to your second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the agreement. No extension to no notes. We will revert that to item number 13. And we have photos of the picture. Access. 
the two ramps uh, out of 75 are located because the first ramp is right near the door or where the ramp comes onto the front of the road. They can't be within a certain distance, so there's a mutual access easement that goes to the south that allows traffic northbound to get in there and get in. So when, once they reverse the ramps, we'll be in good shape that this accommodates. That's why you see the two ramps in close proximity. And then the areas, the areas uh, outlined around the building are concrete parking. The other areas comply with the gravel display area as, as discussed previously, yeah. which will be behind the curve. When do they want to break down on this? Yesterday. <laughs> yes, please. Do you want a motion, Steve? Unless there's any further discussion. We need a motion. I want to find what it is. I'll make a motion to approve. Approve. And a motion to approve the site plan and manage the jury section. Second. And a second. Do you need any further discussion? All favor? Raise your right hand. Mr. Manager. Mr. Mayor, if I can just recognize a Rodney for his work on the John Deere project. He, I think he adopted Brody Pettit in this process to, <laughs> to help him through uh, the trials and tribulations of, of trying to get a business here. And this is a big deal for the city of Van Austin, for the CDC and the EDC. This, in the first couple of years, could be almost $200,000 a year. In, sales tax revenue uh, to the city. So um, this is a, a monumental accomplishment. My hats off to Rodney and the CDC for supporting it. My turn? Yes, Mr. Continue on. Thank you. Um, I'm pleased to announce a city planner job offer uh, was extended and has been accepted. Mrs. Amy Matthews will uh, report to work on January 4th, 2020. Uh, Amy brings extensive background in city planning to Van Alstein, uh, having served as a senior planner in Little Elm during its time of their rapid expansion and growth. She's currently the senior planner in Richardson and she's excited to become a part of Van Alstein. Uh, I hope you have an opportunity to meet her Friday night when we get together. Uh, asphalt work on Kelly Line West Jefferson uh, has been completed. Uh, the crew is now busy making repairs to the improvements of Village Parkway, which was uh, one of our higher priority of projects. The only thing that will remain will be the striping requirements on Kelly Line. Uh, Open early discussions uh, with GTUA concerning the need that the city will have for a new water tower that will need to be operational in the next 24 to 36 months. It will go uh, at well number five, which is 121 west, about a quarter of a mile on the north side of 121. So we're identifying what it is we need and how much it will cost and how we're going to pay for it. They could just for recent changes to our impact fees. The city was, um, has submitted two grant applications, one for $150,000 and one for $750,000 that would be used, if funded, for our downtown park. Uh, the downtown park is a $4 million project. Um, my negotiations with Rislin, they've agreed to advance the city $2 million against their community development fees. If we secure this $900,000, we'll have three quarters of our uh, needed money to build that project. And then with um, the $1,250 we received for household on housing development, we very well could be able to build that park with no impact on our community to tax revenue. Uh, the architectural firm WRA has been selected to conduct a feasibility study and site elevations or site 
that evaluations for the proposed municipal complex funds for this stud uh, study and the associated architectural work were appropriated at the time uh, the land was purchased. Our goal is to have this work completed by March of 2020. I will be on leave December 23rd through January 1st. I'll be back in the office on Thursday, January 2nd. I'll also be out sometime for a week in January for some medical work I've been putting off for some period of time, and I'll update the board once that time is confirmed. That's it.
south on 5, turn onto Marshall, and then turn um, left onto Maine. Okay. And then, um, okay. Yeah, kind of dis- right, end at Dorothy Fielder. I was just going to say, between that event at 11 o'clock and the parade at 2 o'clock, shop and eat local here in Maine. I'll stay by your right. 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 I agree. Okay, I think uh, that should just about do it. I want to thank uh, the staff for all their hard work. And, uh, so with that said, we will see you on what January the... We're going to be uh, January the 14th, so uh, we'll uh, see you on the next Everybody have a Merry Christmas.